Welcome to this video in our course Competition Policy and Strategy. In this video we are going to talk about the solutions to exercise 6.2, the so-called SNP test. And in this exercise we are asked to describe the process of the SNP test or how it's uh, commonly referred to the hypoth hypothetical monopolist test in key points. And then we are asked to answer the question, what is the conceptual idea behind this type of market definition? All right, so let's first start by talking about the process of the SNP test. So, the idea behind this SNP test is that the relevant market should be the smallest market on which a mono monopolistic pricing is possible. All right, so we consider, we start by a really a narrow market definition and ask ourselves, is on this market, uh, is in, in this market, would it be profitable or profit maximizing rather, rather to employ a monopolistic pricing? And then um, if that is the case, then we say that this is um, the relevant market because we now found a market uh, yeah, for which there really is no competition from firms that are not yet taken into considerations. All right, so the relevant market again is the smallest market on which monopolistic pricing is possible. So we, um, we will now discuss or describe the process of the SNP test. We will first start by considering all identity goods in a market. And then we are going to uh, analyze whether a 5 to, 10, 5 to 10 percent increase in price would be profitable for a hypothetical monopolist. And if we answer this question with a yes, well then we have found the relevant market. Otherwise, so if, this, if we need to answer this question with a no, if that is not yet the case, well then we will include the next closest substitute, so we will, so to speak, broaden our market, consider uh, the next closest substitutes to the goods that we already considered to be in this market in the previous step and repeat this thought experiment. So again, ask yourself, well, now considering these additional products, these additional parts, now parts of the market, well, would it now be profitable to, uh, to choose monopolistic pricing? All right. We can do this um, to find the relevant market and the relevant market, again, in itself um, might carry two different meanings. The first meaning being the product market, for example, so we are looking um, at similar related products and we want to ask ourselves, well, are these closely related enough so that the strategic decisions of the firms producing one good have an effect on the strategic decisions of the firms producing the other good? Well, if that is the case, then these products are in the same relevant market. But for this to be the case, of course, these products have to be sufficiently closely related and have to be in an economic sense um, substitutes to a sufficient degree. And one example for this would be pizza and falafel. And I think we all can understand why, uh, how this example would work. Well, of course, um, yeah, it would be, you could ask yourself, uh, or we could, an economist might ask, um, what is the relevant market, the relevant product market of the pizza bakery down the road? Um, can they employ monopolistic pricing? And in how far does the pricing of the falafel place right next to it or within the vicinity of the same city uh, play a role in their strategic behavior? And it seems plausible to me at least that pizza and falafel should be substitutes to some reasonable extent so that probably the pizza bakery cannot employ a monopolistic pricing even though there might be the only pizza bakery in the city. Um, as long as there is a falafel or maybe a, a hamburger place or whatever uh, kind of substitute to pizza is in the vicinity. All right. So we are looking at different products, but still they, uh, they reveal some, um, some substitutability against each other. 
And then the second concept is not the product market, but it's then, uh, but instead the geographic market. And what this refers to is, well, now we are really considering basically the same product, but at two different places. So uh, a very, in a very literal sense, geographic market. For example, a pizza place in some location A, and then maybe a pizza place that is a few st uh, streets over. All right. And you can imagine, of course, if uh, these two locations are far enough apart, then at some point you are basically a monopolistic pizza bakery because the next pizza place is just so far away. All right. And then as, um, yeah, as these pizza places, these hypothetical pizza places move closer and closer together, then at some point you get a larger and larger degree of substitutability between these two places. So if pizza place A um, decides to increase their price, well then depending on the distance to the other pizza place, at some point consumers will simply switch and go to the farther away but cheaper place, of course. right? And another example would be the famous uh, hoteling example where there is two ice cream stands on the beach and the question is just well uh, well how does uh, competition unfold between these two places selling the same or a homogeneous good but at two different locations right and in this way we conceptually distinguish between product markets and geographic markets the snip test of course is able to uh, analyze both of these scenarios All right, now, towards the evaluation of the SNP test. So, um, first, uh, maybe the first pro-argument for a SNP test is that this market definition is based on a, def uh, definite, uh, on a definite criteria. So, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you, you can at least, in theory, uh, yeah, measure it properly and have your have your calculations at hand. However, the problem is, well, at the beginning, we when we were discussing about what is the SNP test, we said, well, we are looking at a five to ten five to ten percent increase in price and asking ourselves, would this be profitable for the hypothetic hy hypothetical monopolist? Of course, this five to ten percent is really arbitrarily chosen. You, you could ask yourself, why are we not looking at a 1% increase? Why are we not looking at a 50% increase? This is really arbitrarily chosen. Um, and that is, of course, one critique. Um, this 10%, 5 to 10% is just um, yeah, what, what is established uh, to be commonly used. But there, it's, yeah, it's easy to argue that an, uh, another number would maybe or could maybe be um, better suited in this, uh, for this analysis. And then the next problem is how to measure profitability. Um, like how to measure profitability in the real world. Because of course we can employ uh, economic methods. We can employ a model and model the market and simply calculate, well, does profit increase? In the model world, that's of course easy to do and we, we, can, we can do this and employ the SNP test. But then again, the real world will never perfectly match any of the models we are looking at. So uh, it can be, um, a matter of discussion whether or not the economic method or model we used is actually suited well enough for the market we are analyzing. All right? Other versions or other, other um, ways of measuring profitability would of course be uh, surveying, surveying consumers or um, if possible rely on a natural experiment that of course meaning that there is some exogenous shock that impacts uh, the pricing in the market. So uh, like a randomized control trial, but of course not uh, introduced into the market, but happening by nature. That's why we call it a natural experiment. Um, so in the end, we can, we can conclude that the SNP test is a rather, uh, rather a structure for a thought experiment. So we can use the SNP test in order to, um, yeah, to, to think about how would we define uh, a market such that we can um, find um, the relevant market on which 
monopolistic price, pricing would be profitable. So this is really a, a thought experiment. Uh, this gives us uh, a structure to think in when we want to analyze uh, yeah, pricing behavior and relevant markets in the real world. Now there is one additional um, problem we can run into when using this test and uh, this one is um, yeah because it, it, it uh, occurred in the, in the real world it even has a name it's called the so-called cellophane fallacy and what this um, refers to is a situation where in fact a firm is already employing monopolistic prices and if this is the starting situation then this SNP test will yield a market definition that is way broader than it should actually be. Simply because in a situation where a firm, for example a cellophane producer, is already acting as a monopolist, well then you will always find that a price increase by 5, 10, 15, whatever percent is not profitable. Because as we have learned, as we have learned in the beginning of this semester, um, well, the, monop the monopolistic pricing strategy is the profit maximizing in the market. There is no way to extract even larger profits. So increasing the price coming from a monopolistic pricing will always decrease profits, or at least not increase them, right? So what is, uh, and that is of course the, the crucial part for this SNP test. Uh, and the crucial, crucial reason, reason why the SNP test would um, yeah, give us a wrong idea of the market in a situation where, we are, where the starting point already is monopolistic pricing, right? Okay, so in the end, of course, the, um, the market definition that results from employing the SNP test to a market where we already have monopolistic pricing without knowing, of course, will, will yield to um, a yeah, a way to broad market definition. Okay, and then one final point is um, we are going to talk about uh, two-sided markets down the road during this semester, but basically it's just consider a platform, any platform, there's buyers, there's sellers, um, and then there's a, there is a platform operators, and both of these sides of the market, suppliers and, set, uh, and sellers, meet on this platform. And now we have a two-sided market, a so-called two-sided market. And in, this, in these kind of markets, um, it's really unclear how to employ a SNP test towards, for example, the supplier side on a two-sided market, simply because there is um, other effects going on, which we, will go, which we are going to talk about in the future of this course. Just, um, just, so you, uh, just to mention it at this point, um, the SNP test, uh, or it's, it's rather unclear how we can use the SNP test even conceptually on two-sided or more-sided markets in general.